Hi, so we're going to move on to preparing uh, a nice apple compote, um, specifically uh, for our apple puffs, but actually uh, an apple compote is something, a really nice thing to have for apple pies, of course. Um, put natural yogurt for, for your breakfast. It's a really nice thing, especially as we head into summer and we have a glut of apples. So uh, it freezes brilliant as well. And you can use the same uh, basic techniques to make homemade apple sauce as well. So, uh, so let's get started. So today I, I'm gonna, I've got some Granny Smiths here today, uh, which I had eaten apple. The good thing about that is um, cost-wise, they're considerably cheaper than, um, than Brambley's. Uh, slightly sweeter as well, so we can uh, really use those natural sugars that are, that are in, in the apple anyway, rather than putting uh, cane sugar in there. Um, the other nice thing about it, you can leave the skins on, so we're increasing the fibre. A little apple corer here. Um, if you don't have one of these at home, I'll, I'll, I will show you both techniques. But I, I quite like uh, my little gadgets. Um, and with these, you can, uh, you can actually do something really called stuffed apples and you, you could put a filling of the raisin sugar and cinnamon into here um, and pop them in the oven and just bake them. And they're, they're a really nice, nice dessert. So let's, let's um, show you how to deal with this. So two holes that are really important uh, when you're cook cooking. This one is the bridge, uh, or some people call it the tunnel. And what it does, anything that's of a round shape or an even shape, you've tried cutting it in half without doing it, chances are it will slip around the board, uh, you could end up chopping your fingers off and you don't want to do that. So we can see the core has come out with this core, so a nice little thing to have. We're going to dice this apple up, so I'm now going to use uh, the, 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 the bridge again. And cutting it down like so and now we're going to dice this because we want nice dice so again you can use that bridge hole that keeps your fingers all out of the way of things okay and then turn it and now we can use one that's called the claw the claw is a really important one when we're chopping you want to be able to keep the ends of your fingers out of the way of what you're chopping so the claw is a perfect way of doing it just turn it very similar if you, if you play snooker or pool, this is how you hold your hand when you bridge your cue in order not to knock and create a foul point. So we'll just do that again. We're going to go down in half just to reduce the, the thickness. And then we're going to again use the tunnel just to cut that down safely. And then we're going to use the core the claw just to keep our fingers out of the way. Start off really careful. Now we use these same grips for when we're chopping onions and you can end up with nice fine onion chop. And that's something else we'll move on to because we've got a few savoury dishes coming up. Okay, so without an apple core, again, the bridge, like so, in half. Then you can lay it nice and flat on your board bridge again in half again. Okay, then bring it up again using the bridge like so. And then lay it on its side and then just cut through like that. And then the bridge and then, but you can see with the apple corer, it does speed it all up a bit. I'm just gonna show you that again. So just slice off like that. And you get all the, the pips and the stalk out of the way then. And then we just cut it down using the claw. Right, great. So in my pan here, I have some butter. Okay, we're just going to get the apples in there. Now, important if you are taking your time doing this, or you're doing a, a, a great amount, you need to put your cut apple and submerge it in water, or squeeze lemon juice on it, because what happens is it starts to go brown. That's called enzymic browning. More common word for it is oxidization. All things like apples and potatoes, things that have got a skin on them and a sugar content, they will brown. When the oxygen hits them, the enzymes 
in the um, the fruit react to it and it will go it will go brown really quickly. So a great way you need to put a barrier on it. Barrier of lemon juice or water. So in here I'm just sweating down my apples a little bit. Now we're going to soften these. We are not going to stew them okay, because they're going to be baked in the inside the pastry which will be a nice hot steamy environment. So I've got some sultanas in there again add in more fibre. If you don't like them of course you don't need to add them but you know try and try and stretch yourself. This is cinnamon. I adore cinnamon. Cinnamon again is a wonderful spice really good for our digestion system really really lovely. So that smells gorgeous in fact it just smells like it smells like Christmas. So got a nice little bit of brown sugar, demerara sugar um, couple of teaspoons in there. Okay. So, keep this moving. And once you've stirred it up, what I want you to do is just add a little bit of water. And you can see instantly that's causing steam. And that's what we want. We want the steam because it will help soften the apples quickly. You continue to just to fry them in the butter then they'll start to go hard. What we want is them to stew nicely. Okay, you just need to bring it up to the boil. And as always, once it's ready, just test it. Taste it for sweetness. Taste it for the, have you got enough cinnamon in there? You know, really, really important. So I'm gonna to continue to stir this until all the steam evaporates the liquid away and then we're left with a very moist beautiful apple puree and that apple puree we're going to use to make some apple puffs I'll make another short video and bring all this together the puffs filled with the apple and baked in the oven Because there's a lot of technique involved uh, when you're handling the puff pastry. You know, you know, we've got the turns in there. We've got to roll it. We've got to cut it, and we've we've got to shape them and glaze them, and then get them into the oven. So, okay, I'm going to let that reduce away until it's a nice apple puree, and you'll see that in the next video. But for now, we have covered preparation of the apple, um, cover the preparation of the apple, the cooking of the apple, be very careful, always make sure you've got a, a cloth handy, these handles can get hot, metal is a good conductor as we know, but in professional kitchens we always have metal handles because we'll often put these um, saute pans straight into the oven to finish the dish off, so always make sure you have a cloth just in case. Okay, well it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I hope you like those techniques, uh, even if you're not going to use them to, to, to cut apples, um, carrots and vegetables, safe knife handling is crucial in the kitchen. Anyway, if you like it, please like it and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.